Hello. Welcome to Jamie's Vinyl Hideaway. I'm Jamie, and what I'm going to be doing on my show, my debut show this is, is talking about the Alice Cooper group. The original group that made their way across the Sonoran Desert from Phoenix, Arizona to LA back in the late 60s. They met up as Frank Zappa, as you may have heard. And they threw him into the studio. And they released their first album, Prettiest For You. This album artwork was a painting hanging in Frank Zappa's living room. Or in his house somewhere. I believe it was his living room. Anyway, the five members of the Alice Cooper group Alice Cooper, Neil Smith drums, Mike Bruce guitar, Glenn Buxton guitar, and oh, it is Mike Bruce, sorry. This was Dennis Dunway bass, Glenn Buxton guitar, and Mike Bruce guitar. Really cool uh, artwork on the album cover. A little picture there, very psychedelic looking Alice Cooper group. Anyway, this music on this album, much different than. Uh, what became to be known as the Alice Cooper group and they became famous and this is the kind of stuff that was on this. But I'm going to jump right to track number four so you get an idea just how different this music is. Even for 1969, even though they thought it was perfectly normal, they were hanging out with Sid Barrett, so I mean... She'd like to give her life away, like to stay another day, oh, try it out another way. That's a little different, isn't it? But anyway, this uh, track, Fields of Regret, is kind of like uh, going in the direction that their music would go, at least as far as the theme of the music, the Fields of Regret. They played this song at the Toronto Pop Festival. Actually, what was it called? The Toronto Rock and Roll Festival. It was a, and that's uh, where the infamous chicken incident happened, and this would have been one of the songs that they were playing. producer per se on this album. On the album it says produced by Alice Cooper, which implies the group at the time. But uh, Ian Underwood from the uh, Mothers of Invention was proposed to be involved in the production. The album came out on Straight Records, which was one of Frank Zappa's uh, 
record labels distributed by Warner Brothers. Had a nice little pink label. Their second album, Easy Action, was the name of it. Inspired by Action and the line in the West Side Story show. By the way, I got the, uh, the group to sign a couple of these albums for me. They go to the Chiller Expo in Parsippany, New Jersey a couple times a year. Well, they have been for the last few years. And they're really a nice bunch of guys. But anyway, so I'm going to play a couple songs from Easy Action. First song I'm going to play is called Still No Air. It's an odd little piece. I think of it as the title track, because the line, easy action, straight from the West Side Story, is in this song. And the first time that they use part of the music from West Side Story, which they later revisit in the School's Out album. Let's see if I can pick it right in the middle here and see how close I get to where I want to be. Here it goes. This album was produced by, oh, I got right where I wanted to be, David Briggs, who uh, really didn't care much for the band and didn't pay much attention to production. Could have been a much better album, but I think it's a really great album. But again, quite different, still in L.A. David Briggs produced Neil Young that year and afterwards, and would go on to produce a really great album by Spirit. 12 Dreams of Dr. Sidonicus. And this little song has an introduction by Tom Smothers, which I believe he used on TV. And what it says is, you are the censor. If you don't like what I say, you can turn me off. The Smothers Brothers had some issues with the censors back in the 60s for speaking their mind. I don't want you to miss that. Oh, and that's on the last song on the album. Lay Down and Die Goodbye. That's a real cheery title. <laughs> They borrow some of the songs or lines that they used in a song when they called themselves the Naz. Of course, they had to change that name because of the group in Philadelphia led by Todd Rundgren of the same name. Changed their name now as Cooper. You really want to hear this one. Sorry. It's not much, but... If you don't like what I say, you have the choice. You can turn me off. 
Nice little jam goes all over the place and then comes back. However, let me be a little more there. Anyway, David Briggs, the producer I mentioned. Not to be confused with David Briggs, the piano player from Muscle Shoals, played in Nashville, or David Briggs, the guitar player from the Little River Band, but David Briggs, the producer from California. But anyway, the Alice Cooper group decided they had enough of uh, LA, and their manager brought them to Detroit, where they met up with Jack Richardson who produced the, uh, the Guess Who. And Detroit was more like their kind of town. You know, Iggy Pop and the Stooges, the MC5, the Frost, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels, the Amboy Dukes, and then a little further south, the, uh, where is it south? North, Flint, the Grand Funk Railroad. But anyway, their third album, their breakthrough album, Love It To Death, came out on Straight Records originally, the same pink label on the first three albums that we played. Now this particular one had the, the thumb, where when the album first came out, uh, Alice is holding his rap and he has his thumb sticking out, but they thought the thumb looked like something else. So they decided to, uh, well, they didn't know what to do with it at first. So they, when it went to Warner Brothers, they did something really terrible and they just put a big white stripe over it. Really ruined the album cover. By the way, it's got a really cool gatefold cover and really cool pictures of these spider eyes. But anyway, then later on they decided we'll just airbrush the thumb out so you don't see a thumb and still have the artistic uh, photograph, which is a really great photograph, a really cool back photograph, which reminds me, 1971. I saw this picture in the Long Island Newsday or possibly the Daily News. And I just looked at this guy and I was like, who is that? What is that? I mean, I was listening to good wholesome music like Black Sabbath, Deep Purple. You know, guys that looked like, you know, me, except with longer hair and older. Now, if you would have told me this group would have a song about Dwight Fry famous character actor from uh, Dracula and Frankenstein and many other horror films of the 30s, I would say, wow, that's perfect. But what I saw was this, and I wasn't ready for this. Well, that would soon change. And so would the music. Jack Richardson had a... Uh, a guy working for him by the name of Bob Ezrin. And Bob Ezrin co-produced this album with Jack R Richardson, the album Love to Death. And 
Bob Ezrin would produce all the uh, Alice Cooper albums up to Muscle of Love. He didn't do Muscle of Love for some reason. But anyway, the title track, uh, not the title track, the first track, there is no title track on this album. This would be a green Warner Brothers label. After they, uh, Warner Brothers bought the rights to uh, Alice Cooper's straight records, they all came out on Warner Brothers. And this first track written by Michael Bruce, called Caught in the Dream, kind of shows you right off from the start that this is a different band than the one that was in LA. We're in Detroit now, which means you have to rock. This album would have I'm 18, their first hit. There's a couple of songs on this album that had a biblical connection. One was called Hallowed Be By Thy Name by Neil Smith, where when the record was issued in Israel, they misspelled the word hallowed and it became hallowed, H-A-I-L. Anyway, but this other song, written by Alice, is a Second Coming, and uh, has a very, to me, a Beatles kind of melody about it, or production. I only know hell is getting harder. I would recommend if you're interested at all about the group and how they got through their first, well, their whole career up until the breakup, I would recommend. That 
Now, they didn't do too many covers. But for some reason, they did a cover on this uh, album called Sunrise. And it was a song from a British person called Rolf Harris. And it was produced by George Martin, who later went on to produce the Beatles. He did a lot of comedy records. And this song, Sunrise, Sun Arise, written by Butler and Harris, Rolf Harris. It's kind of a novelty song. It has a really cool guitar solo in it. And that's what I want to play for you right now. Because it is the best part of the song. Let's see if I can find it. much wraps up my uh, first episode of the uh, Alice Cooper group. Now a question that I have for you is on the original movie uh, The World According to Garth there was a scene where the uh, Garp was driving the babysitter home And they stopped, and uh, something, you know, not good happened. We wound up fooling around with the babysitter, but there was a song, <clears throat> Long Way to Go, and I remember it coming on the radio when I first watched the movie. But then when I saw the movie on TV, there was no Long Way to Go. They replaced it with some other, you know, not as interesting song. And I wonder why they did that. I'm sure it has something to do with, you know, money and contracts and everything else. But uh, if you know why, I'm not sure uh, Chef Gordon, the manager, knows why. But if you know why, I was wondering why that was cut out of the, when you saw the movie on TV. So anyway, if you have the answer to that, please make a note on my, uh, my, uh, what is it called again? My YouTube channel. That's what it's called. A channel. That's what they tell me at least. But they're called channels. My YouTube channel is Jamie Vinyl Hideaway. Is there anything else that uh, you want to cover while we're here? Oh. Because this show is all... Oh. What, what do we got here? What is this? What is this? Okay. Looks like a message from my assistant. Oh, this is what we call Stump the Jamie where my assistant looks up a question regarding the, uh, the topic of my show. Oh, what was Alice, Alice's father's op occupation? Well, you may know this. Alice's father's occupation, which was the same as his wife's father's occupation, was a preacher and a Methodist, I believe. Matter of fact, Alice likes to say he was a French Huguenot. Anyway, he, uh, his wife, uh, his father was a preacher, and they both married, the two of them, and they're still married. Alice and Cheryl Cooper. 
So anyway, that's it. That's my Alice Cooper show. I'm going to continue uh, with the last four Alice Cooper albums, Killer, School's Out, Billion Dollar Babies, and Muscle Love. Hopefully, I could do that in one show and keep it, uh, keep it short. So until then, this is Jamie signing out from Jamie's Vinyl Hideaway. Later, man. Move it.